it's not it's going to shrivel up and be very dry no i'm joking i'll go as quick as i can phil told me to cut a load of stuff out without even looking at my notes I was standing at the back, and I really believe this morning that God wants to speak to some people. I believe that God wants to actually set some people free. I believe that God wants to heal people this morning. But actually, we have to go on a journey this morning that the word would encourage your faith. So you then stand in a different position that you can actually believe that God can do what he says he can do. It's a journey of faith. We want to have an increase of faith. It's a gift of faith to believe God for the impossible things. Absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I believe that's what God has said to me this morning. And at the end, we're going to have an opportunity to pray. God has has shown me a couple of people that I believe he wants to speak to. And you will have the opportunity to come up and, and receive prayer. If you don't come up, I will come to you, so don't worry. Because I know, I know who you are. And that's not a pride thing, because that doesn't often happen to me. Amen. I believe it's God. Yes. And forgive me for not wearing a shirt. I'm just feeling a bit more comfortable in a, a hoodie today. Amen. All right? Just my little safety blanket of a hoodie. It's not a difficult... It's not a difficult topic that we're looking at. We're actually looking at the church. Jesus is building his church. But actually, it's so, so important in the life of a believer that the enemy doesn't want people to go to church. Come on. Doesn't want believers to go to church. So Jesus is building his church. But what do non-Christians really think about church? Well, the Barna Group carry out various different studies, and they, a uh, set of their statistics said only 21% of non-Christians, non-Christian people have a positive perception of the local church. Millennials, 26, 22 to 36-year-olds, think that the local church is detached from the real issues people are facing. I want to say to them, come and work a week with me. <laughs> We're in touch. We know what's going on in the world, and we're trying to see it through a biblical worldview and stand on truth rather than sinking sand that's unsteady. If it cracks one more time, I'm going to use the other microphone. So, what is the church? Well, Christianity is far more than Jesus and me. Right? It's, it's not me and Jesus skipping down the road, having a great time together. Although there are times that that can happen. But when we look in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, and Jesus' interaction with Peter, we can see that Jesus is introducing The church. And in fact, it's one of only two passages in which the word church is mentioned in the Gospels. So we're going to read Matthew 16, 13 to 19. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. There's so much in those past, that passage. We can't go into all of it today. 
the one, the one part where Jesus asked, who do people say, what do people say about the Son of Man? That alone is a preach right there. But we're looking at the church. We're looking at, at what, what is the church and what does that mean for us? And for some of us this morning, right, give me that. Thanks. All right, cool. Brilliant. Um, for some of you, you're going to be grounded in church. You're going to be established in church. For others of you, this might be your first time here. You might be looking for a church. You might have only been a couple of times. You're not sure. What, are, you know, what am I looking for in a church? And I hope this morning, for all of us, God will just speak to us and guide us and actually give a yes and amen to being the people of God that he's called us to be. And that you would find, number one, that you're in the right church. Number two, if you're not in the right church, you have the freedom to go and find the right church. But I want to help guide you to look at what we should be looking for when we're looking for church. So Jesus can be speaking about uh, the global church in this passage rather than the local church. But it's really important that we have a perspective on both if we can. We're here in Harlow, in the local church, interested in local things, and what God is doing in our locality. But man, there are other churches meeting all over the world, serving and worshipping God, like us. And we need to have a view on that as well. What is God doing globally? What is God doing locally? And Jesus is the head of the whole church. Time doesn't allow for us, particularly as the Lord turned up in our worship, doesn't, doesn't give us time to really get into the details of verse 18. Some questions like, is the church built on Peter's faith? Is the rock the Lord Jesus or there's lots of different questions that come up when you read these passages right so you can go away and you can study that and do a deep dive into that one thing is for sure though Peter recognised that Jesus is the son of the living God and that changes everything I wonder what people think when they hear the word church You want to put those slides up? Maybe people think that old stone built building, perhaps it's falling apart. Next one. Maybe people think, man, this is really boring. When is this guy going to shut up? Anybody got any matchsticks? Hope that's not you this morning. I really do. I promise you, it's going to be worth sticking with this this morning. So for us charismaniacs, I'm going to play a video um, by a, an American... We're not really charismaniacs. Um, well, not all of us. Um, I'm going to play a video from a, a comedian called John Christ, who's an American comedian. And uh, he did a, a little YouTube series called Church Hunters. And I'm just going to play one of those. It's only like three minutes long. And um, hopefully the audio is also on. I don't know if it was muted. So um, we're going to play that video and then we'll, we'll reconvene. This is your first church. This is Creekside First Baptist. Honestly, right up front, uh, didn't love the name. The Sunday morning experience was just a little too traditional. Hey guys, how we doing? Hey, good. Doing how are good, you? Doing good, doing good. So I know you didn't love the traditional vibe of the last place, okay? Mm -hmm. okay. But I think this church is really going to do it for you. Yeah. It takes relevance to a whole new level. Behind me, you will see molded clay, jar art, tapestry, canvas, mosaic wow. church. Mm, I love beautiful. it. Right? So you've you, heard of interdenominational. Mm -hmm. Right. And you've heard of non-denominational. Mm -hmm. Well, this church identifies as interdenominational. Wow. 
Oh, wow, that's, that's perfect I love for it. us. It really is. But here's the kicker. A lot of celebrities go here. Yeah. What? Jeff Foxworthy. Oh, <laughs> we love him. Yep. We really do. Ben Higgins from ABC's The Bachelor. <sighs> perfect. Several Real Housewives. Ooh, I and know. Usher even came here one time. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, well, well, follow me. Come on. Let's do it. <laughs> so refreshing. Honestly, that last trip was just way too traditional. It was yeah. too much. It was like we left there feeling convicted. Like, uh, ugh. Right? Right. We're just, we're looking for more of a Tony Robbins type sermon. Like inspiration, like a TED Talk with a Bible verse. Yes. Oh, yes. Right? It's perfect here. We love it. It really is. We love it. Awesome. Cool. Well, you guys know a lot of contemporary pastors speak out of the Message Translation Bible. Mm -hmm. Right. Or this pastor speaks out of a brand new translation. It's the Tumblr Bible. Shut up. We love Tumblr, though. This is great. A lot of emojis, a lot of abbreviations. Oh, I couldn't ask for one. And how many seats in here? Oh, it is 6,000 altogether. Babe, 6,000. I got to be in this worship band. Imagine me up on that jumbotron mid guitar solo. Do you know how many Instagram likes you get? Oh my gosh. We find it hard to find a church right now because I grew up Catholic. I grew up and Baptist, so. So like we, we drink. Yeah, but just in private. I mean, obviously you get it. Basically in terms of like worship, I think we're looking for like a Jesus culture type feel. Oh, I right. love them. Hillsong, obviously. Oh, obviously. leading you to the cross? Hillsong's great. Like a Bethel minus the spontaneous yeah. stuff. Yeah. Just for me, I connect in worship more when the leader is attractive. Personally, I'm a Carrie Job guy. Oh, okay. Well, she's married. So. Um, so is Christian Stanfield. Wow. So one of my personal favorite things about this church is the service times. Okay. There's an 8.30, a 10, a 1 o'clock, a 5.30, and even a 7 o'clock service. Oh, there's nothing around like 2-ish? Yeah, for us, for what we need, 2, 2.15 is best. Yes. Uh, how many songs do they do during worship? Usually five, five and a half, depending on where the spirit leads. Oh, wow, babe, is that, is that a, a lot? lot? Well, if that's too that much for you, they like... have a program here called the Worship Assist Program. Okay. So if you ever get tired during worship, an intern will come out and just hold your arms up. You just keep worshiping the King of Glory. Just like that. Wow. I love it. Oh, you can still look super spiritual. Huh? And my arms get so tired from yoga. Oh, same. I actually like this church. I think we can make it work. It was all right. I mean, it was it was good, but pers like I emailed the pastor and he didn't immediately respond. So uh, we're taking these vessels elsewhere. All right. Anybody see themselves in there? You don't have to admit it. It's fine. But this is how we don't look for the right church. Okay, we laugh and joke, but people do. That's to the extreme. But I hear so many stories of, yeah, the worship was, was all right. Preachers a bit long, a bit boring. You know, these are things that peak that we hear, right? Not, not here, here. No one would ever speak badly. Here. The worship never goes on too long, ever. And the preaching is always vibrant and exciting. This wasn't the plan for the New Testament church. It's about his people and his power flowing through them. The New Testament church should look like the church in Acts 2. We've been there since January. Right? Loving and serving one another. Praising God and praying together. Prophesying, speaking in tongues. Seeing the sick healed, people coming to Christ. These are the, the signs of a healthy, vibrant church. The word says, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those in every place, Call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Call to be saints together. Coming under the name of Jesus, coming together and worshipping him, spending time together, praising God, praying, seeking him. These are the type of people that we want to belong to. People committed to Jesus. People committed to one another. Living spirit-filled lives. 
a family that people are being added to frequently. We see lots of new people coming through God Central and we love it. People who spend our whole lives together being built up by Jesus, developing a personal relationship with him that affects all of our lives. I said it was worth sticking around. I'm going to talk about the family of God. And I completely forgot to get my illustration. But I'm thankful, thankful to my dad who nipped out to, to get what I needed for this illustration. And I think you'll all thank me at some point. This is a jar of not just licorice all sorts, but revels as well. Because the thing with revels, they all look the same. Well, not all of them, apart from those round disky ones, like the minstrel without a coating. But they all look alike, right? It's a bit different with the licorice all sorts because you can, you can sort of see there's some differences there. But this is, what, like, this is what the church should be like, the family of God. Each suite is different. It's like you and me. We're all from different backgrounds. We've all had different beliefs. We have certainly all got different personalities. Some of us are white, some of us are black, some of us are from India, some of us are from the UK, some are from South Africa. Yeah, all right. Get it in there quick, get it out of the way. <laughs> and, and that's the diversity of humanity represented in this church. It's like this. And actually sometimes people can kind of look the same, like the revels, right? But until you bite into one, You might be fortunate enough to get the orange one. You might be really unlucky and get that coffee one. So do I, but I'm pretty confident people take orange over coffee, right? No? Oh, okay, all right. Well, it was, a, it was for an illustration anyway. No, you're not looking after them. Despite the differences, when you take a bite, you discover that each sweet is different. Just as everybody here has different qualities. That's really important. Just look around. Look around at these people. This is your family. Right now, God has called you, if you're part of this church, we don't have a membership, so you can't sign up. Right, it's, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. It's a call and a commitment to walk together without a legal contract, without being blood. Committed to one another. Celebrating what God is doing in our lives. Knowing that God is inclusive. That God encourages diversity in the local church. These are the things that you want to be looking for when you're thinking about joining a church. And we all come together and we all celebrate those unique differences, those different flavours. And we make this place better for being different. And we worship God together. I'm going to leave that there. Jarius, yes. you are the guardian of the jar. I would particularly watch out for the two guys on the front row. <laughs> Keen as mustard, these guys. 
So we're going to go to Matthew 18. We're going to look at we're going to look at a rather strange scripture in the context of the church, uh, but it is relevant. It, it's uh, if your brother sins against you. Family, right? <laughs> Family can be challenging sometimes and how we handle that. But there's some, there's some key things in this passage that we can, we can look at when it comes to being the family of God. So it says, Matthew 18, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained a brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen, if he refuses to listen to them, sorry, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen to even the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Very quickly, verse 15 talks about relationship. Verses 16 and 17 talk about structure. Verses 17 also talks about discipline. 18 talks about authority. 19 talks about prayer. 20 talks about fellowship. Go back and look in Acts chapter 2. You're going to see some of the threads, right? But which church? Interdenominational, not whatever it is. All of that stuff that that guy was talking about. It's so confusing, right? Next slide. We know it, right? If you're looking for the perfect church, give up. You're in and amongst people here who have been forgiven but I can assure you we all still make mistakes every single one of us if you haven't read your Bible if you haven't read your New Testament go and read the New Testament try and find a perfect church you've got Paul speaking into some horrendous situations But unfortunately, it's the only model that we have. It's the best model that we can have, that we can look for. So if we go into it knowing actually that these people are only human and actually they're probably going to make mistakes like me, if we go in with that mindset, it frees us. But there are some key things to look for when you're looking for a, for a church. This is dicey, right? Because we could, we could have a massive exodus. There'd be nobody here next week. But I want you to know as a leadership team, these are the things that we're pursuing. These are the things that we hold dear, that we're looking for. We are not the perfect church by far, but we are pursuing Jesus. And we are looking and trying to navigate what a New Testament church looks like. Acts 2.42 They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. Number one, apostles' teaching. New Testament pattern church will have the Bible as a central point. Not only in its preaching. Hear this. Not only in the preaching but the outworking of it in individuals' lives. Which affects the wider body. Right? If you hear stuff that's preached up here, but you don't see it, you need to question that. A healthy church will believe the Bible is the word of God. And the focus is on living biblically rather than on the leadership's own ideas. Secondly, 
New Testament Christians love each other like members of a family. They spend time together sharing their lives with one another. And actually, most of that happens outside of organized meetings. We meet up with people on, on a, you know, just on a whim. Or people know that our house is an open house, can come round. We t- tend to lock the door at 11 o'clock at night. So if you come after that, you won't get in. But our, our, our house is, is an open house. You, don't, you know what? There's the people here, they, some of these people know this, right? You don't have to knock. You can just open the door and come in. It's true, right? You've, you knock because you're a good guy. But there are other people that do walk in. They just come in. Hello. Hey. Ooh, hey. Mark Walker. I see that hand. I see that hand. But that's the, that's the culture that we want to cultivate. It's not for everybody. Don't get me wrong. You, you know, that British reserve. My home is my castle. I'll put my drawbridge up and down when I'm prepared to let people in and out. That's okay. But we've seen the fruit of that, having that open door policy. Breaking the bread, Jesus commands his followers to take the bread and the wine in memory of his death on the cross. It shouldn't be a somber, formal affair, but rather a celebration of Christ's love. Well, at the moment we take communion uh, in our Sunday gatherings once a month. We actually want to increase that to to more than that. And we're just looking at... um, how that works, what that looks like. Because it is an important part of a believer's life. Sharing, sharing the bread and the wine. And sometimes it's not necessarily a sombre thing, but God is wanting to highlight some stuff. Other times it is celebratory for us because we recognise that actually we want to celebrate Christ's love for us and his obedience with his death and resurrection. Prayer, New Testament believers prayed a lot. They prayed on their own and they prayed in groups. A good church will have a healthy prayer life. You know, we can always improve on that as well. How's your prayer life? How's the life corporately in church? Prayer, we've got prayer on a Sunday morning. We've got prayer once a month on a Friday. There's many, many people that are praying in their individual lives. We've got prayer, WhatsApp groups. If people are looking specifically for prayer, we can always improve. Always. Worship in church. We see there, right? Guy wants to shred and be on the big jumbotron in front of 6,000 people. You know, issues of pride. and Look at me. But worship is actually a really, really important part of the life of the church. First and foremost, because we're created to worship the living God as individuals. So it's important that the church that we're a part of expresses that. We mustn't only join a church that is a worshipping church. We must also be worshippers ourselves. One of my favourite Bible verses, we know the story as well. John 4, 21 to 24, the woman at the well. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming where neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem uh, will worship the Father. You worship what you do not do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when, true, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. We worship God out of a living relationship with him. If we're born again, we are made alive spiritually. And we're able to worship God in spirit and truth. And actually worship is, it involves our whole being. It, invo- it involves our mind, it involves our heart, it involves our bodies, it involves our will. Let's just look at those for a moment. Think about your mind. Mind. Do you ever find sometimes when you read the Bible and you're reading great passages, 
Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Forgetting all his benefits. Does that influence your worship? Sometimes if you're listening to sung worship, that can influence you reading the Bible. So when we worship, we're to use our minds and your heart. Do you find it hard to express your emotions? Perhaps you like a certain style of worship, but you, maybe you struggle, this is just an example, maybe you struggle with shouting to God, with cries of joy, which we see in the Bible, right? Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. That garment, it's given us a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Isaiah. Actually, God wants us to overcome the obstacles in our life when it comes to worship. And one of them in this country is that British Reserve. I'm not into naming spirits of this and spirits of that. You know, these are not necessarily the days of Elijah. <laughs> these are the days of the living God pouring out his spirit. You get my point. But that British reserve hinders people in actually expressing themselves in worship to the point where I wonder what on earth are they going to do when they get to glory? They're going to be in for a, quite a shock. So rather work on that now, right? So you're prepared. Go YouTube some African worship or Indian worship or whatever. Where actually they have, they need God, man. These people need God. And their worship expresses that. But we need to be open to the Holy Spirit. That touch from the Holy Spirit. And releasing of our emotions. But it's important that we understand that we don't let our emotions rule us. We don't worship from a place of emotion, right? I'm feeling really bad today, so I'm not going to worship. No, no, no. You see in the Psalms, David saying, Oh, my soul, I'm going to make myself praise the Lord. I'm feeling like rubbish, but I'm going to praise God. Your emotions can quite easily hinder, but they can also help in your worship to God. And I'm not just talking about sung worship. Okay. Your body, people in the Bible worship God by raising their hands, by singing, by clapping, shouting, dancing. Sometimes they knelt down. Sometimes they prostrated themselves before, they laid before God. Some of them even used a tambourine. And I come under the authority of Scripture. Oh dear. But we should enjoy, particularly our times of sung worship. Your will. Worship is more than singing songs. As I said before, David, it's about yielding our lives to God. Lord, I'm willing to do your will, whatever the cost. Nearly finished. A healthy church. You're looking for a healthy church. A healthy church will overflow out of its Sunday gatherings. You want to look for what are, the, what are the other access points available in this church? So that might be midweek groups. What does a midweek life at a church look like? Are you seeing one anothering? We would say one anothering. Coming alongside people. Is there support? Is there opportunities to meet with leadership? Is there opportunities to meet with one another, to gather, to pray, to, to share life together? 
We're seeing all of this in Acts 2, by the way. Also in Hebrews 10, verse 24 to 25. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as, the ha- as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. church should be stirring one another up to love more to love better to do good works don't neglect meeting together speak to other people in the congregation see what the relationships are like get a perspective it's easy for us to stand up here and kind of paint this picture of this glorious church and We do this, that and the other. But actually it comes from within the body. The life is all of us together. This is just a small part of our life as a church family. It's two hours, two and a half hours, depending on who's speaking, of your week. It's not a lot. New Testament church spent their lives together daily coming together meeting together I want to say this to finish and this is on us now this is our part when we've done that once you've found a church and you've joined the church you should be loyal and you should be committed Making sure that that church is building to a New Testament pattern. And then when you're in, don't touch that. (laughs) But when you're in, be all in. Be all in. Because actually, you have got something to bring as much as you are going to receive. And there's plenty of stuff to do. In terms of gatherings. But there's also a lot of people here that maybe you don't know that well. Who can you one another with? Who are you building relationship with? In the church. And I want to say, as a leadership, we're committed to and endeavouring to build a New Testament church. Knowing that there there is no perfect church, but we value every single person that we would consider to be part of the God Central family. And we pray for you, we love you, we would, we would go the extra mile for you. And I, and I hope you know that. And if you don't know that, please, please come and have a conversation with us. Because we want to make sure that we're building well. That people can come in and feel included. I mean, I don't particularly like licorice all sorts. Oh, they do. They do. Otherwise, they'd gone out of business years ago. They definitely do. But but as an analogy, you know, we can use that and see, actually, there's, there's value in that, in that diversity. And we're called to build together. So I hope that that's been helpful I hope it's built a little bit of faith for you this morning actually you know encouraged you I see some of this stuff in God's central church I might stick around or if not you're running for the hills I want to say to you there are other good churches in this town we have relationships with with a number of different leaders in, in the town we meet together we pray together we encourage one another we laugh in the good times we cry in the bad 
And there's some good people in this town. But know that you'll find a place here where there's love and acceptance and an, and an opportunity to, to grow in your walk with the Lord. But, but do feel free to have conversations with us as a leadership. I'll direct you to Mark for that today. Um, I'm joking. For, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, you can chat, please. Um, James, can you, um, can you come? Um, did you pick a song? Let me see. See if it... Okay, all right. That'll do. Wasn't the one I was thinking. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, we're going we're gonna to sing. We're going to praise and we're going to worship God. If you want if you, if you to stand, if you want to clap, if you want to lift your hands, if you want to kneel, all of these things that you see in the Bible, right? That's free to you this morning to do. But if you need prayer this morning, for healing, healing in your physical body, healing in your mind, 